If you're new to the channel, my name's Ben, and uh, Stringer Bridge Farm is a 300 acre family property. And one of our main enterprises right now is cows. We're thinking about adding a couple other things like crawfish, but I guess we'll just have to see how it goes. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about our winter strategy and how it just keeps changing. So as y'all know, we went through a horrible drought this past summer, like really bad, one of the worst on record for our area. And it kind of changed the way we do things a lot. So normally I would still be stockpile grazing here into the first week of December, or at least close to it. But my fields have been bare for like two months now. And as you guys know, I kind of go back and forth between bale grazing and unrolling our hay bales. So I've kind of been just back and forth between bale grazing unrolling hay or maybe unrolling a little bit and it's kind of based on several factors one is the hay wastage the other is the nutrient spread uh, and that's kind of the main things i'm trying to, to to balance and depending on the conditions we're in on our farm changes which one i find is more effective so when we're muddy we waste a ton of hay unrolling it because the cows as you can see, they like to walk on top of the hay, but if it's muddy and there's a bunch of mud on their hooves, they contaminate it very fast and the wastage is just astronomical. When we're dry, they don't waste quite as much when we unroll hay. So right now we've been dry. And so what I've been doing is this field is about 300 foot long. And most of the time, a bale of hay, like you can see, I started unrolling this bale right here. And it's not too bad a wastage. A little bit here where it was laid down thick, and then there's very little wastage as we go down and there's nutrients spread all along this line and it goes almost all the way across the field now this year the uh, windrows for the hay were very thin so the hay is unrolling a little further but again you can see i started one here you can barely see any wastage because it's been really dry and it kind of parallels that other one which you can see right over there and this one made it all the way across the field and you can see it spread the manure load and the urine load all the way across this field. Then I did the same thing here, except this bale of hay had a much thicker windrow. So it, uh, it didn't unroll, but about halfway across the field, but you could see the same thing. So I'm gonna work my way down this field like about every 50 feet and keep unrolling hay and try to get as balanced of a nutrient load as I can get on this field while, while it's dry. Now, if we start getting into mud season, then I'll probably just start strategically placing the bales and bale grazing them to uh, best utilize my hay. And my plan is to leave them on this one field, the field I didn't plant. Now I imagine I'm gonna get a fair amount of clover, start growing up under them. You can already see the green on the field. A lot of that is just some wild clover that's wanting to sprout, some weeds. So I have a little bit to graze on and will mostly feed hay, probably for about the next 60 to 90 days. But once we get I'm going to say about a foot or 15 inches of growth on that first field. I'm going to start rotating them through our winter grasses. So that's the field I just came from, a spoil field. This is the field I planted only about a week ahead. And you can see the uh, growth is pretty noticeable in this field. And as an example, close in, you can see. So this is basically where the disc came and it just pulls out these little clods about this size, a couple inches deep big as my hand and then each little pocket you can see a bunch of rye grass and if you look really close those are some turnips and then if you look at that that is the crimson clover right there so everything kind of looks like this we had good moisture after we planted so all the fields look like they came up pretty evenly 
and I'm thinking we're going to be in pretty good shape as long as I can keep them cows healthy uh, until we get to grazing on this green, this green forage. Now, if you've ever wondered if a little bit of soil disturbance improves your stand of grass that you broadcast spread, this is a perfect example. So I broadcast it with the seed spreader, but I did drag a disc. And if you look, 90, you can see it better right here just because it's uh, all bare from an old fire burn. But where the disc passed, you can see there's definitely a significant higher percentage of germination in those. Now maybe it's just because the seed settled there or whatever, but you could definitely see, even though I didn't plant in rows, the grass tends to grow in rows and even down to like each little cup of where those disc blades cut, you can see there's like a tuft of grass, which it's kind of neat to me. And uh, I hate disking my fields, but I think this kind of shows too, if I had a no-till drill, I'd probably get a similar effect that you're getting good seed to soil contact. I think all your seeds would sprout much better and uh, you get a really good stand of grass with a drill versus broadcasting. And this is what my nemesis keeps doing to me. You see this, I mean, that is a big spot that is torn up. That's him stinking armadillos. And I've been working on it pretty good where I hadn't shown a whole lot of it, but I've been carrying around my 22 pistol and I know I've killed at least a dozen of them. And it seems like almost every time I come out, if it's mid afternoon, I find one and I get them. You see, there's another big one. Didn't have to go very far. Here's another one. Here's another one. You look right over there. There's another one. It just goes on and on and on. So I hate just killing stuff, but uh, these guys are really putting a hurting on my fields right now. So I know you guys probably think I'm kind of crazy. I just keep changing my mind about what's the best way to do stuff. But I'd kind of argue it's not that I'm changing my mind. It's I'm adapting to what's in front of me. So I think when people ask me the specifics about what I'm doing, what I'm doing may not work for you, but it may not work for me, but it's uh, what I think is the best idea or the best solution at the time. And so we'll just keep doing that. We'll just keep adapting to whatever is thrown our way. If it comes to having to destock animals, that kind of stuff, we'll even do that. So I'm open to trying anything at least a couple of times to, uh, you know, get the most out of our farm and the most out of our animals with, you know, hopefully the lowest input. Uh, that's possible to keep everything safe and healthy but uh anyway that's just one little snapshot into what we're doing here and if you got any questions or comments leave them below and i'll uh answer everything i see anyway you guys have a good day see you later